let's just consider a basic blender. We've got, if you're working in the food industry, for example, uh, you're going to have two streams coming together. You're going to be mixing some ingredients, for instance, and uh, we'll have some kind of valve controller or a valve that controls the flow rate of these two streams that come together. And uh, in this case, we've got a stream one with a uh, flow rate WA as well as a composition XA, stream two with a flow rate WB and a composition XB. And uh, the stream that comes out of our blender will have a composition W and a I'm sorry, a flow rate of W and a composition of X. And so um, if we begin to kind of analyze this system as we have in the past, um, our inputs here, U1, we'll call WA, which is the flow rate because we can just close or open up the valve. And our other input here will be uh, simply WB. And uh, our output 1, which is denoted Y1, uh, will be the flow rate of our mixed stream and Y2, our second output, will be the composition of our mixed stream. And so now that we've defined our inputs and our outputs, uh, this is a, a bit different now from the SISO single input, single output systems we've dealt with before in that uh, a change in one input affects should be an A, uh, all outputs. And so um, this is where things begin to get a lot trickier because in the past, we've only had to worry about how one output will respond to one input, which means we only need one transfer function to think about a process transfer function. In this case though, if we dialed up just stream one, the problem is not only are we gonna be affecting the outlet flow rate, but we're also going to be affecting the outlet composition X. And so um, that's why uh, things get tricky. And so um, in this case, the question that we ask is, should we pair output Y1 with input U1 and output Y2 with input U2? Or should we pair output Y1 with input U2 and output two with input one. And uh, this is the big question that um, control engineers have to answer, and there are rigorous ways that we go about doing it. Um, and the RGA method is an example that I will uh, get to later. Um, so to begin to analyze this problem, um, we'll first go back to what the definition of our transfer functions are, and we know that an output y is mapped to its input via a transfer function referred to as g. And because we are now dealing with a MIMO system, um, instead of this being uh, a single inputs and single outputs, we're, we're now going to start working with vectors and matrices. And so now what we'll define, um, I apologize for underlining these terms, but um, what <laughs> uh, what uh, we'll do is a y will now become a vector and um, g will become a transfer function matrix and our input will also be a vector. And uh, so what this refers to is y will be um, n outputs, g will be an n by m transfer function matrix, and u will be m inputs. And so in this example that I've just drawn, um, if we want to start putting it into this notation, we would have y1, y2 is equivalent to, and we would have g11, g12, g21, g22 times u1 and u2. And so what G11 tells us is how a change in input one maps onto Y2. What G12 tells us is how a change in input two maps onto Y1. And so um, th this is the notation that we will go with. And uh, if we wanted to begin to start analyzing how uh, this is referred to as a two by two MIMO process because we have two inputs, two outputs, but we can have 
um, any dimensions here, um, but for an introduction, two by two is a good example to start with. Um, we'll look at it like this. So we'll just have some kind of black box and uh, we'll have input one, input two, output one, output two. And so um, if we begin to uh, begin to uh, start taking into account what we've just defined here, what we'll find is now we've got input one coming in and input one will uh, have an effect on output one via the G11 transfer function, but it will also have an effect on um, input two via the transfer function G21. And uh, doing the same analysis for input two, we'll find that it can have uh, an effect on output two, as well as another effect on um, output one. So uh, what happens here is we will add these two, uh, and this is what the uh, control block diagrams will look like in Simulink. Uh, and then we will also add these two, and I apologize for not making it line up better, but we get the idea. Um, and this will have, uh, will look like this. And so our black box now begins to make a little bit more sense in terms of the control block diagrams involved. And so the question I begin to ask is now that we have two inputs, U1 and U2, we have two manipulated variables. Um, we're going to design two controllers, controllers, uh, GC1 and GC2. And so the question is whether or not um, you want to structure uh, pairing these inputs in a particular fashion. And so um, I'll uh, end this video now, but what we're going to turn to is the RGA, the relative gain array uh, or analysis method, um, which will tell us um, how much of an impact uh, changes in input one has on an output one and how much of a change input one has in, on an output two um, so that we can realize that um, if a majority of the change that is caused in our system on one output is due to one input, we should pair those uh, inputs and outputs. It's a, in a high level, that's what it does, um, but it is a bit more rigorous than that um, and I'll get to it. So relative gain uh, analysis, and um, so this wraps up an introduction to uh, the MIMO systems uh, and why they're important, as well as how we can begin to analyze them. Uh, I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.